my name is Rachel and today we're talking about The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson. I wonder if you've ever heard of him but this is not a book review. I'm talking about the phenomena I have witnessed in the fandom that makes me and many others frustrated with fans of this series. The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson holds a magnetic appeal for many men who are readers <laughs> due to the world building and the characters and the exploration of theme that resonate with well masculinity. So this epic fantasy setting combined with like these unique magic systems, these cultures, it offers a very immersive experience that has captivated audiences who enjoy exploring complex and expansive fictional worlds and characters like Kaladin and Dalinar face internal struggles that mirror real life things about masculinity creating a relatable connection particularly for men. So this novel's exploration of like honor, duty, leadership, personal growth, this resonates with men who appreciate these themes because of our real world ideas surrounding masculinity, right? Which is, it's fine. But what does that mean for the fandom and how they interact with each other, particularly how they interact if they are men talking to women who are fans? You may be familiar with the Barbie movie that just came out. This scene in particular is relevant to what I am uh, talking about today. I've never seen it. Oh my God, you've never seen The Godfather? This movie is a rich blend of Coppola's aesthetic genius and a triumph of Robert Evans and the architecture of the 70s studio system. Can you start the movie over and just talk through the whole thing? The term for what just occurred is a term that many men hate, and I understand why you don't like it, because it feels like an indictment, but the term is mansplaining. And listen, before you get mad, my husband, who is a man, thought that that scene was funny too. My husband has not entered the world of reading Sanderson, though, in fact, I've read more Sanderson than I've 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 read more Sanderson than he has which his number is zero so yeah he has read a lot of Brent Weeks though which is not something I've done something we both have done though is switch over to Ridge wallets and their key cases and there's never been a better time to make the switch and join us in this because your next wallet can turn into a new Hennessy Bronco Velociraptor now you can enter for free on their website for your chance to win my link is down below in the description and in the pinned comment but you do get one bonus entry for every one dollar that you spent on the website and custom Hennessy products because they're teaming up with Hennessy come with up to a thousand entries. The Ridge wallet expands to hold up to 12 cards plus room for cash while remaining as slim as possible. They don't just have these awesome wallets and the wallet is not the only product that Carlos and I both use from them. They also have these key cases which securely hold one to six keys and prevent your keys from jingling. This was my old wallet. It was really bulky. It's like it's fine. It's cute but it's really bulky and I'm trying to like downsize. So now this is a children's toy and I have permanently switched over to Ridge and I get a lot of compliments on my Ridge wallet. I switched from one pink wallet to another. I did not do that on purpose and I don't know what I was doing without these key cases because I hate key jingling. I don't like it. It's a sensory nightmare. I'm turning my entire family into a Ridge family because I also turned my brother onto them. Slowly everybody in my family will be a Ridge person and you can get up to 30% off your order when you buy the Ridge wallet and the key case together and Ridge is so confident that you'll like it that they'll let you test drive it for 99 days. You can send it back for a full refund if you don't love it. I think you will. The durable material means that it comes with a lifetime warranty so it should be the last wallet that you will ever need. And buying the last wallet you will ever need also comes with the chance to not only switch out your old wallet but switch out your old car. You could win a new Hennessy Bronco Velociraptor or $75,000 in cash. You can enter for free at ridge.com slash breeds with Rachel. Find gear that you will love and get additional entries for every dollar that you spend. Plus, if you use my code, you get 10 bonus entries. So use my link down below and use my code Reads with Rachel to get 10% off your order plus those 10 bonus entries. And thank you so much to Ridge for sponsoring today's video. I'm going to go over some incidents that I witnessed um, that inspired today's video. I'm going to talk about what I think is in the book that I know of that promotes this culture of discussing Way of Kings in this particular fashion and give some ideas of how we can fix this. So the Barbie scene. It reminded me of something that I recently witnessed, but it was not the first time that I have witnessed this. I just want that to be uh, remembered. <laughs> One of my mutuals, Emma, over on TikTok, recently posted a video discussing The Way of Kings, which she read for the first time. This video has over 330,000 views. And the comment section is rife with repeat after repeat of the 
this scene from Barbie. Except unlike in the scene from Barbie, Emma did not ask. <laughs> Emma did not ask for Way of Kings to be explained to her by men, and yet it happened. There was a presumption that this was her first ever Sanderson read, a presumption that clues her and the rest of us who actually, you know, watch her TikToks and listen to what she had to say in on the fact that the men commenting did not actually listen to anything that she was saying. <laughs> This is one of the most frustrating parts of being a woman and reading Sanderson and navigating any sort of like Sanderson fandom online. Men show up to talk at you, not with you. It's unlikely that if a man were to have posted the same video that the comments section would have looked like this. Let's look at some of the comments in this post and Emma's incredible responses. Everything that doesn't involve Shallon is great. Shallon is awful though. Color me shocked at the amount of dudes who go out of their way to tell me they hate the only female POV character. Just wait, there are two more books. There's something so funny about dudes trying to mansplain this series to me and getting it wrong. I know what a series is. There are three more. Welcome to the fandom. This is my 10th Anderson book. I'm not new here. Wait till you find out that the Stormlight Archive, Way of Kings is book one, is part of an overarching universe called the Cosmos. Cosmere. Mistborn is also in the Cosmere. I legitimately can't tell if you think you're being funny or you are 100% seriously trying to mansplain the Cosmere to me right now. The best part of Sanderson's books is they're all based in the Cosmere, all in the same universe. Watch for connections. So awesome. If one more man tries to explain the Cosmere to me and explains it wrong because you just assume I don't know, I'm going to lose my mind. Ha 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 ha. Wait till you realize there are more with more planned and other series that tie in. So I want you to notice that there's a trend here. There's not just mansplaining happening explaining the Cosmere to her. There is also mansplaining, uh, explaining that a thousand pages is real literature and anything less than that is not. Uh, and then on top of that, there are men who come into her comments to say uh, Brandon Sanderson sucks in a mansplainy way. And women are not doing either of those things in her comments. Women are not showing up to say uh, a thousand pages is nothing. And they're also not showing up to say Brandon Sanderson can't write. So I'm just pointing these out, even though these are not technically Brando Sando mansplainers. I'm pointing them out because they are trends from only men nonetheless. So let's continue with more comments. Do people find 1,000 pages daunting? I'm always mildly disappointed if a book isn't at least 1K. I think you mean it's written by a man. That's why it's good. Big fucking yikes, dude. You're in the wrong place. You read one Brandon Sanderson book. Brandon Sanseron book <laughs> and realize all of these books actually suck. Actually, no, because I'm not an asshole, so I'm good. A thousand pages is breakfast. When you find out that this is only one series of the Cosmere and you need to read 20 more books that size. One, so just a heads up to you, there's a bunch of hidden stuff tied in the Cosmere, which is his universe that most of his books are based in. Two, so you'll probably have to read it two or three more times as well as reading the rest of them to get everything involved. It's amazing. I'm going to start demanding cash app payments every time a man tries to explain the Cosmere to me because they assume I don't know anything. Am I the only one that skips over fantasy books if they aren't at least 800 pages? Read the epics, then go back after the smaller book series. A thousand pages is a normal length. What the fuck are you talking about? It can't be worth a thousand pages. Welcome to the Cosmere. That's going to be a project. I literally say in this video that this is not my first Cosmere book. I'm not new here. The Stormlight Archive is the backbone of the Cosmere, so god, you're all so fucking annoying. This condescension is why people don't want to read Sanderson. I won't mansplain anything. Just unfollow you for your horrible taste in authors. Man can't write for shit. I sincerely want you to know from the bottom of my heart that I didn't fucking ask you. Ah, an intelligent comment. I've read some of his work. It's awful. Objective bad. As an autistic person, I'm a realist. Someone delusional decided bad was good. I called them out on their bad take. I'm primarily bored right now, to be honest. And their reply wasn't no, because reason, just blind. Love of their preference. I was calling them stupid to be insulting. 
I was using it as a description, as any autistic person would. Boredom plus idiocy. Moral of the story, set easy goals to win participation prizes. Pat yourself on the back. Yes, the very easy goal of reading a thousand pages in one week. Clearly, by the mound of books behind you, you know exactly how much you're capable of reading. You set a weak goal to celebrate something. What do I do now? Girl, you know there are five more books in the Stormlight Archives, right? It's good, but it's basically YA. Also, Shallon is written so fucking badly and her arc is so, so stupid for the most part. Can't rate it too high because of that. If you love The Way of Kings, get ready to strap in. There's an entire Cosmere out there and it's so good. I'm not new here. This is my 10th Sanderson book and third Cosmere. That's still extremely new to the Cosmere though. Enjoy the ride. Which three of you read? Might be that all these authors are children. Don't start writing until you're in your 50s or 60s and have an IQ of over 130 and life experience. This is so embarrassingly condescending and ironically, you need to grow the fuck up. All of Edward's opinions are moot though because it turns out he is a um, one of those lizard conspiracy theorist people. So that's great. This experience of being spoken at was so irritating for Emma, understandably so, that the next time she talked about Way of Kings, this was her caption. This is my 10th Sanderson book. If you try to mansplain the Cosmere to me, I will fling you into the sun. Yet many still ignored what she actually said and spoke at her again. And this man even called her talking about a book a thirst trap. There are three more books. Look at the caption. I am well aware. Okay, but in order to understand this book, you must first understand the Cosmere. The sad part is that I legitimately can't tell if this is a joke comment or not. It's wild out here. This one is not serious. This one is just funny, but I just thought we could all use a break and do a little hee hee ha ha together uh, because this person is actually making fun of the, you know, mansplaining going on in the comments because men do this thing where they're like, oh yeah, woman, you like that album by that artist? Then name one album. Go on. Uh, and Emma is just as funny, if not more funny. I'm more into his early EPs before he was on a label, you know, back when he was doing the real stuff. Okay, that's the best kind of thirst trap I've seen. It's not a thirst trap. It's a woman reviewing a book. What is wrong with you? But I want to note something very important. These are comments on a positive review of Sanderson where mansplaining is happening. Can you imagine what is being said when a woman talks about Brandon Sanderson's books like Way of Kings in a negative way. I would show you because another one of my mutuals did have a video up where she did give a critical review of Way of Kings. She did not enjoy it. I believe she gave it two stars. But I cannot show you those comments. They're gone because she ended up having to take the video down. And these are just women who push back. I haven't even touched on the women and I can name two large creators in particular who are Sanderson fans and I have seen them be mansplained to over and over and over but they choose not to push back which I understand because it's exhausting. The men find these women more palatable to listen to because their comment section is a safe place where men feel safe and inclined to speak at women rather than with women and I wonder how much they are actually listening to the women who are speaking. Let's talk about why I think this happens. Uh, first let me explain what the appeal of The Way of Kings is. So The Way of Kings is the first book in Brandon Sanderson's Stormlight Archive series. It is a fantasy series. It's set in the fictional world of Roshar. We have a few main characters with POVs. This is a world ravaged by magical storms. Main characters are Kaladin, which is a guy who's like a former soldier turned slave. Dalinar, a high-ranking nobleman who deals with political stuff. And Shallon, a woman with mystery in her past. You may recall this moment uh, where a man's was saying that he doesn't like Shallon, which Emma pointed out is the only woman POV. And the impact of The Way of Kings on fantasy fandom has been significant. Sanderson's like praise for his world building and his writing brings in readers of all genders and is, is well loved. It's got complex characters. It's got that world building. And as you can probably guess, men are more of a fan of Kaladin than they are of Shallon. In fact, I have run into men at playgrounds who have named their son Kaladin. <laughs> I've talked about this before in a video. Their personal journeys mirror like real life challenges that men face making them relatable in a fantasy landscape which is great. The book's exploration of themes like honor and leadership and duty and personal growth again resonate deeply with fans but particularly men and I think that this is because men in particular feel like these things are inextricably, inextricably linked to their masculinity and that is where a lot of men are told and therefore feel that their value lies. And they have a very large and extensive 
fan base and they're very engaging with each other. There's a huge online presence. There is forums and social media groups. There's fan art. There is all kinds of videos. If you go on YouTube, you can look up just like video after video after video of people like dissecting this series, which is great. I love when a book creates a fandom like that. They're out here sharing extensively about their theories and their interpretations. It's awesome. It has a very dedicated following. However, it is crucial to acknowledge that this book's fandom, like many fan fantasy fandoms, struggle with the issue of misogyny and gender bias. I'd like to offer ideas for men in the fandom on how they can actively endeavor to not do what happened to Emma anymore and challenge any misogynistic tendencies and create a fandom that is a place where women don't feel like we have to preemptively tell you not to mansplain to us. So first let me dive into what mansplaining is. The phenomenon of mansplaining where men condescendingly explain things to women, assuming women do not know things as baseline, has become obviously a contentious issue in modern society. I mean there were obviously men who like clicked off this video immediately after I said mansplaining, right? They don't like the term. And one area where this behavior is often observed is in discussions about books, particularly when men try to explain books like those written by Brandon Sanderson, like Way of Kings, to women. And it's a term used to describe this like patronizing manner in which men provide unsolicited explanations, opinions, and advice to women, even when the women possess the expertise or knowledge in the subject matter on their own. And even when they express that they possess that knowledge and subject matter. This phenomenon can be particularly prominent, I think, in the fantasy community where men readers assume that women do not know things as the baseline and it has become a contentious issue in modern society. One area where this behavior is often observed is in discussions about books, particularly when men try to explain fantasy books to women. So mansplaining is a term to describe the patronizing manner in which men often provide these unsolicited opinions and explanations and ideas and advice to women, even when the women themselves already possess that knowledge or expertise on the subject. And even when we express that we possess that knowledge or expertise and information on the subject, like as Emma stated, it was her 10th Sanderson book and everybody just ignored that and went straight into the comments, not to listen to what she had to say and then respond, but to talk at her because they saw Sanderson, they saw a woman and they saw an opportunity to do me talk now. <laughs> it's very frustrating that this phenomenon haps it happens in these conversations about books where men just assume that women lack the same level of understanding standing about a subject and Brandon Sanderson's work has garnered a huge fan base not just men but you know people of all genders the world building and the characters and the theme and the fun and the the fantasy and the intricacies of his work these are things that appeal to everybody and yet somehow the baseline is that women don't understand it or haven't already read it but these are books that are appreciated by people of all genders yet men again and again fall into this trap of assuming that women readers are less familiar with not just Sanderson's work but the genre of fantasy as a whole, leading to instances like I see with Emma and my other mutuals who are women. So what is misogynistic about mansplaining? At its core, mansplaining is rooted in this gender-based presumption that women are less knowledgeable or capable, which is very infantilizing, which is, the, is a thing that we experience quite a bit under patriarchy. This mindset per perpetuates these harmful stereotypes and reinforces these traditional gender roles where women always have to be under men and we need to be like led by men. And when women are patronized by men, even in instances like these where we were being explained of books that we've already read <laughs> that we enjoyed, they, these men inadvertently like perpetuate the notion that women's opinions are less valid and further marginalize their contributions to literary discussion. It can be really discouraging for women who are passionate about literature to enter a conversation and then also have to have a secondary conversation where we say, no, I already am a fan. You don't need to explain it to me. You can just talk to me like I'm any old guy who also enjoyed this book. It just sends a message to us as women that our insights and our perspectives are not valuable, they're not needed, and like we need to be validated by men before we can enter the conversation. This deters a lot of women from actively participating in conversations about authors and about, read about reads like The Way of Kings, as we like anticipate that we will deal with condescension rather than just being able to engage like any other guy does. Obviously this is not just in The Way of Kings fandom. Men dominated fandoms have a significant 
amount of discussion regarding them recently where toxic masculinity and misogyny are being talked about and, and pointed out within these fandoms, these issues can be better understood through the lens of, I'm gonna say it, I'm, I always, you, you guys know I'm very predictable. We can understand this issue better by looking through the lens of perspectives like bell hooks. I'm begging y'all to read this. I'm begging. It's so short. Just read it. Bell Hooks was a prominent feminist scholar who emphasized in her work the interconnectedness of gender and power and culture. In fandoms dominated by men, toxic masculinity often thrives due to the reinforcement of traditional gender roles and norms, and toxic masculinity can manifest in a various amount of ways. So this patronizing of women fans, yes. Also um, the policing of what is like an acceptable interest for men and perpetuating harmful stereotypes about men and women. And misogyny can come out in anything from like patronizing but also hostility towards women and that comes out quite a bit in these fandoms. And again these behaviors make women fans feel like we are not welcome. Bell Hooks insights can shed light on possible solutions. So she she advocates for a collective effort to challenge harmful, harmful gender stereotypes. And these gender stereotypes don't just harm women, they also harm men. So men are effectively separating themselves from possible relationships, like friendly relationships with women, which feels isolating to men probably, um, by engaging in these conversations where they're talking at women rather than to women and with women. If we collectively choose to disrupt these harmful patterns, we can make change and an approach can involve like fostering conversation that encourage men to examine their own biases and challenge traditional notions of masculinity. So even examining the text of the Way of Kings and looking for how does this play into gender stereotypes that are present in our, wor our world and how could Brandon Sanderson do better? Like I, I don't think Brandon Sanderson is like super misogynistic in his writing as far as I've seen, but it's always good to ask like how can we do better, especially as men? How can we do better in challenging those harmful traditional masculine roles that don't actually aid us or aid women or aid society as a whole. And when you really dig into it, Hook's concept of the imperialist white supremacist capitalist patriarchy can be applied to understanding like the root causes of all of this, but you should probably read Men, Masculinity, and the Will to Change to really dive into that. The dominance of men in these fandoms often allies with like larger societal power structures that reinforce hierarchies, not just based on gender, but based on other things as well. And recognizing these can aid in addressing not just the systems but symptoms but the underlying systemic issue as well and a good way to like see those systems is how they come out in like internalized biases from authors when you read a text and I realize that men don't typically read fantasy for that reason men are typically drawn to the genre because it allows them to escape into imagination offer us offers a sense of empowerment and excitement that aligns with traditional notions of masculinity I talked about this recently and I got a lot of pushback particularly from men about talking about how men typically read more fantasy than they do romance and I don't really understand the reasons that they they read they don't want to read romance the answers I got they didn't really satisfy my my understanding for why men don't like romance the romance genre focuses on yes emotions and relationships and intimate connections and those things are framed by society as more feminine societal expectations and gender stereotypes can lead men to avoid or belittle the genre to distance themselves from being perceived as like soft. And I also think that it has to be stated that even women engage in this, by the way. The genre is rooted in a broader history of devaluing anything that is loved by women, like majority by women, because uh, the, anything loved by majority women is seen as like shallow and frivolous. Uh, a good example of this is like when I was 17, I thought it was cool to shit on Twilight because it was loved by majority girls. And I thought that anything loved by mostly girls was inherently stupid. So I just shat on Twilight because I thought that that was the cool thing to do. And the cool thing to do was rooted in inherent bias against women and girls. Even being a girl, I can be biased against women and girls. But obviously men have a stronger pull towards not engaging in anything seen as feminine because while I, a girl, am just trying to look cool to the masculine people, the masculine people have to remain masculine otherwise they are devalued. They can never lower themselves to the level of woman. So what can we do? I think that Sanderson has a good capability of writing 
writing women and girls. However, I don't think Sanderson is the only person writing women and girls, so I think that men need to branch out and read more women and girls written by women and girls. Emulate Sanderson's characters, seek out well-rounded female characters, well-rounded women characters written by women. See what you may be missing. Engage with narratives that break from traditional gender roles. Sanderson's novels often dive into the psychological struggles of his characters. Rereading and focusing in on these emotions rather than the magic and the politics can help cultivate empathy and develop a deeper understanding, especially of women characters. And then this empathy can extend to real life situations with real life women and help you challenge these harmful attitudes and behaviors that you may have internalized and not even realized it. While strength is seen as masculine, we can read these books from a lens of realizing that strength comes in different forms and that vulnerability is not weakness. Maybe reading Sanderson through a lens of trying to create healthier ideas around what it means to be masculine. Engage in open conversations about this with women and listen. This particular thing, not just Sanderson's book, but about gender representation and sexism and misogyny in books. Fans can talk about this in book clubs and conf and conventions. All the same conversations you're already having include women in them and ask them how they actually feel about their representation and how maybe it can do better. It's okay to like criticize your faves. This also can foster a sense of accountability within the fandom which creates positive change. It promotes this idea that, that we can always do better. Another idea is to simply support women. Sanderson supports women creators. Like I've seen him work with books booktubers who are women and I think that that's great. Men who are fans can follow this example by actively seeking out and promoting women who are discussing in the fantasy community the way of kings and engage with speaking with these women in a way that speaks with them rather than at them. Ask yourself are you listening to understand or are you listening so that you can wait for the part where the woman stops talking so that you can finally have your turn to talk at her? Are you actively choosing to engage in conversation and a back and forth? Are you actively choosing to help amplify multiple voices besides your own and besides just men so that we can contribute to a more balanced discussion within the fandom. Fandom has the power to inspire and transform not just the worlds that it, it is a part of, the, these fictional worlds, but the world that we live in. And men have this opportunity before them that I hope that they will take to leverage these themes found in The Way of Kings to actively challenge misogyny. Embrace including women in the conversation in a women that in a way that values what they have to say. To address the issue of mansplaining and promote equal dialogue is essential for both men and women to recognize and challenge their own biases. Men should refrain from assuming that women are less knowledgeable about the topic and that they need <laughs> explanations. And instead of like explaining things to women, engage in discussions as equals. Listen to what women actually have to say and then respond. Value our viewpoints, value our contributions to the conversation in the same way that you value other men. And women, I think, should assert their expertise and not hesitate to communicate that we do know things and don't hesitate to contribute to conversations about literature as a whole. I think that when women see other women talking about having been mansplained about Brandon Sanderson, uh, we should we should say, hey, that happened to me too. Because it's really validating when you feel like, is it just me? And the culture is like to, to just sit there and, and, you know, oh, don't make way be peaceful. That's what like a lot of women are told to do, especially if you grew up uh, Christian, you're told to like, you know, sort of like, oh, the men, you know, you need to like, you need to just let them talk to you however, the, however way. And they just want to teach you things. They're just trying to be nice. They're just trying to be friendly. And it's like, all right, well, at, at what point do like, I need to value their feelings over my humanity. <laughs> Us repeatedly seeing these interactions where women are spoken to, spoken at by men highlights the ongoing need for these discussions and for or gender equality in discussions surrounding books and society as a whole. But like we can start with the Sanderson fan fandom. I think that that's a good place to start. It's crucial to foster an environment where all these voices are valued and respected and, and equal in the conversation no matter what gender you are. I think that we all need to acknowledge this issue and address it in you know different ways. Obviously I'm not asking all women to like ah oh, fight the men but I think that at least acknowledging that it exists is, is very helpful. That way all all readers can contribute to creating a more inclusive environment where all of us can talk about Way of Kings or Elantris or Skyward, whatever we've read. By the way, I have not read Way of Kings. Like I say that for the end of the video because I don't want the men to be like, ah, oh, she's never even read it. Fuck off. I'm working my way through Elantris and I have read Skyward and Starsight. 
I like them. I, I have some opinions on Brandon Sanderson's, you know, uh, tithing to a church that is like so wildly homophobic, but I, I do have a video on that if you want to watch it, it's down below. But, uh, you know, like separating these two things, if I'm to say like, do I like his books? Yes, I've liked what I've read from him. Thankfully, the library is free. <laughs> But all this to say, I am interested in reading more of The Cosmere. I'm getting into it. Uh, I'm reading Elantris and I'm quite enjoying it. But I am concerned about talking about um, the books on the internet because I don't want the exhausting experience of having to tell men, I know, and you didn't listen to me when I talk. <laughs> like, can, can you just come to me as like a, any other reader who's a, a dude? Like, can you just, just talk, to me, talk, to, talk to me like I'm one of your French boys. So I'm hoping that when I do talk about this that I've like preemptively put this out there and that the men know like please don't mansplain to me let's just let's just talk about like my thoughts on Elantris and um you know when I when I finally put that video up when I finally finish it that shit is long as hell holy shit that shit is long as hell like Mask of Mirrors was pretty long but which by the way I highly recommend but my god Elantris is long is Way of Kings longer you can mansplain that to me if you want genuine question go ahead get wild in the comments <laughs> all right thank you so much for watching leave your comments and questions down below let me know your favorite Brando Sando book. And uh, if you're the guy at the playground who named his son Kaladin, uh, let me know if you want to play date. Okay. Uh, all right. See you next time. Bye. Hello, it's Trash Can Rachel. And I have to say thank you for being a friend to my Therapy Bills patrons. And those are Alexander, Ali Magpie, Amanda M, Ashley B, Bubble T, Cammie, Chris, Claire, Des Robert, DJ Raptopus. <laughs> Emperor's New Blues, Aaron, Eric, Faror, Jack and Jill, John E, Casey McKenzie, Kate, Caitlin, Kelly K, Quinn, Lady Kitty Bug, Lek, Molly, Alice, Peggy, Rain. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? <laughs> Reese, Samar, Scarlet, Shiny, SMK. Thank you all so much for being a friend. <laughs> and before I go, I have to say thank you for being a friend to my Potato Starch Marks' patrons. And those are AM Angel, Alicia, Amanda B, Andy, Angelica, Anita, Artie the Ninth, Ashley H, Ava, BB, Beck, Blythe, Bookish Brain Rot, Ray, Bree, Brian, Caitlin, Harlan, Catherine, Kathy, Chris, CJ, Cole, Colleen, Corwin, Corey, Darren, Deborah, Diet Goth, Dorian, Dorotea, Ebby, Elise, Ember, Emily A, Emily L, Emma O A, Aaron, Aaron K, Hannah C, Hannah T, Harpy Kiro, Hello There Darling, Ilianaka, India Inc., JM Tenet, Jay is on Olympus, JP, Jen with two N's, Jennifer T, Jenny G, Jillian, Jules, Just Pugsley, <laughs> Kaylee, Kat, Katie, Katya, Kayala, Kendra, Kylie, Laughing Cat Dog, Laura, Lauren B, Library of Scars, Lisa B, Lou Siri, Luna Moth, Lustful Octopus, Martin, Marcella, Marquita, Maz, Malara, Meow Meow, James, Nat, Natalie M, Never, Nicole G, Nicole R, Nyan Binary, Page E, Page P, Penny Chilling, Fox Glove, Pixel Stars, Pure Atheon, Rachel B, Rat Sarah, Reba, Rebecca, Ren, Robin, Rosie, Rowan, Other Rowan, Sicoria, Zadie, Samantha, Sarah C, Sarah H, Sarah the Bear, Shamed, Shanae, Shannon, Shayna, Sheena K, Sean, Sierra, Stephanie, Talia, Three Old Dogs, Tiana, Tina, Toast, Trash Can Teddy, Title Phoenix, Valentine, and Writer A. Thank you all so much for being a friend. <laughs>